Good morning, all. Welcome to today's Cancer Healing Journey Talks. Myself, Annie Jones from Community Outreach Team of Zenonco.io and Dow Heals Cancer. Cancer Healing Journey Talks helps cancer survivors and caregivers to share their journey with vast number of survivors and caregivers who have traveled or been traveling through this journey. This can inspire and motivate them for their faster recovery as well. I would like to introduce today's speaker, Raj Dimare. She is a breast cancer survivor. Thank you, Rach, for joining us today. Over oh, to you. <laughs> of course. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right. So can you start with a small introduction about you? Yeah. Um, so I guess I'm Rach Demar. So thanks again for that introduction. Um, uh, like you mentioned, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, a triple positive breast cancer. And I was diagnosed when I was 27 years old. Um, it happened six months after I got married. So it was, and it was quite the shock. No family history of cancer of any kind. Um, so it definitely took me by surprise. And through it, I, I did the whole, um, you know, I did chemo, I did neoadjuvant chemo. Um, and so I did six rounds of that. And then I did a double mastectomy with a bilateral mastectomy and with immediate reconstruction. And after that, I did 17 runs of Herceptin, six runs of Zometa, just basically all the different types of breast cancer treatment that's typically associated with triple positive breast cancer. All right. So what was, what was your symptoms and how was it diagnosed? Um, my symptoms, really, it was just me um, touching my breast. I felt a lump um, and... Ultimately, it led me to talking to my doctor and her thinking, actually, because usually at that age, like in your late 20s, you get fibroadenoma. So that's what she initially assumed it was. So I got a uh, breast ultrasound, but obviously the breast ultrasound led to a mammogram to a... Um, why am I blanking out to getting several other tests where the pathology ultimately resulted that um, I did have breast cancer and I had four tumors. Um, so it was fairly large. Obviously at that time I was a little bit more disbelief and just thought it was one. Um, and then, so that's how it was diagnosed. Um, it's just me feeling a lump and then having tests that kind of confirmed what those lumps were. All right. So what was your first reaction when you go to know that you're diagnosed with cancer and how did your family took this news? Yeah, my first reaction is they probably mixed up someone's test results. <laughs> I didn't really, you know, but also deep down secretly, I kind of knew something was off, you know, but I also thought like this is a mistake. This is something you never hear about that will happen to you. So um, it was, like I said, it was, it was a shock and definitely a shock to uh, my family. And then of course my husband, we just got married. And so it was, you know, that's how we started our newlywed life is essentially me going to cancer treatment. Okay. So what all treatment do you underwent? Um, so I did neoadjuvant chemotherapy. And so for those who don't know, that is like chemo before surgery. Um, and the reason why I, I decided to go that route is so it's proof that whatever chemo cocktail they came up with, it, um, they're able to see the tumor shrink before going through surgery. Um, so I did TCHP. Um, and then um, so I did six rounds of that. And then I did surgery. Um, so I did a bilateral mastectomy with immediate reconstruction. And then after that, I continued on the remaining of my treatment doing Herceptin, Zometa. Um, I did also the Zolodex um, shot to kind of like, again, protect my ovaries because I wanted to have a baby as well as like, you know, again, it's just part of the treatment because I was also, you know, positive, um, hormone positive. Sorry. My head's a little over everywhere. It's a little bit. Um, I just took care of my son a moment ago. <laughs> um, and then, and then I also did hormonal therapy up until, um, early 2020 is when I stopped treatment because that's when I decided I was ready to have a baby. So did you try any alternative treatment? No, I just did essentially, um, you know, what my doctor has prescribed for me. So I went through that type of treatment. The only um, treatment I did on myself is the kind of, I did um, 
do acupuncture. And again, that helped me with a little bit of the hot flashes that I got from the hormonal therapy and, and so forth. Um, and then I also seeked therapy. Yeah. So how did you manage your emotional well-being throughout the treatment process? I think right at the beginning, um, definitely I was in like the survival mode where I'm like, I can, I'm just going to, you know, my mind was like, I need to get through this so I can live. Um, I didn't think about where my mental health was until maybe a year out um, when I went back to my corporate job and noticed I just wasn't myself. And my oncologist actually have noticed that. And she basically told me, I didn't even know this existed, called an oncopsychologist. So it's a psychologist specifically for cancer patients um, and told me, I just need to go see one. And she's like, even if there's nothing going on with you, it just would be nice to talk to someone who can kind of understand and understand the difference between, you know, like my mental health issues and like what's cancer. And so I seeked it and I didn't realize how much issues I had. Um, and so, I mean, until now, I still see my onco psychologist just kind of helping me navigate what cancers, dealing with cancer survivorships, um, and then how I am able to basic, um, how, how do I say this? Like how um, I can live with the idea of cancer and how does that fall into like the rest of my life? Right. So who was your support system throughout the journey? Well, definitely my husband. Um, he was there for me, um, which I am grateful for. Um, you know, he was like my rock and he, he went to every appointment and, you know, dropped everything to help me out. So my husband, but of course I have my family, um, you know, my parents are there, my sister, my my cousins, and then some of my close friends. So I, I was very fortunate that I did have a good support system in that way, but who carried all the weight? Definitely my husband. All right. So how was your experience with the doctors and the other medical staff? Um, I have a good experience, but I think a lot had to do with when I was first diagnosed, I seeked like four second opinions. <laughs> um, and it was very interesting for me because then every doctor has a different personality, how they approach things. Even the treatment plan was slightly different. So I just went with like my gut, which doctor just felt right for me. And so I think after that, my experience has been positive because I just trusted who I went with. I knew I made the decision on who my care team is. And I really like that they are, you know, post like the chemo, they were there kind of guiding me through cancer survivorship. I, they, that was like the main part of their program is like, you know, a cancer patient needs to be guided throughout their life. And then they definitely made mental health a priority, which was really helpful because I didn't even consider that myself. And then, so what were the things that helped you make, um, make happy on this journey? Um, you know, little things like I have a blog, a fashion blog that I've always did. And so it was during like the days that I was really sick, um, you know, when I couldn't even get outside, but what pushed me to go outside is like, I, I want to take all these photos for my blog. So even if I was out for 10 minutes, it did make me feel better. So I had something to look forward to that. Um, I, you know, and then sometimes like, there's just little, I, I mean, they're just like very little things that I just looked forward to doing, you know, where either I have like my best friend come over so we could chat about like the latest like Bravo show we're obsessed with. And so I, you, I come to realize like the littlest thing is what I, I looked for those silver linings. And those are the things that kind of helped me get through it. All right. So did you make any lifestyle changes during or after the treatment? Um, that, that's uh, I don't know. Um, not really. I would say the thing that I would say is the biggest is just like being mindful of like my mental health. It was the biggest thing because if I, and knowing when to say no, you know, when to take care of me, 
um, I would say is the biggest, but in terms of like what I did day to day, I kind of maintained those things because those are the things that made me happy. Actually, those are really the things that maintaining the lifestyle that I always had kind of like what kept me going. Um, so um, it, it was more my motivation, but you know, there's things that I added to my life. Like I mentioned the mental health and saying no and taking care of me and self-care is something I never really did. Um, and that's what uh, I just, I put more of a priority. Oh, well, I guess one thing is I did quit my previous corporate job. It was kind of hard because I felt like my life was hospital work, hospital work. During like chemo, I was working like 70 hours a week because <laughs> I felt like I had something to oh. prove, but it also was very detrimental to me mentally and physically. And I had to step back. But the nice thing is I was able to blog full time up until recently where I decided I, I kind of like going back to corporate world, but at least now I know I'm in the best state of mind mentally and physically to do that. That's great. So um, like, did you join any support group during the treatment process? Yeah, so there's several and so, you know, some I, I have stuck with, some I didn't. So in the beginning, um, I've joined the organization called Immerman's Angel, which they, because having cancer at a young age is rare, what they do is they, you sign up for it and they pair you with a cancer survivor that's very similar in age. And they try to do the similar cancer as well. Um, and then just like have myself and this other individual talk, um, which was really nice because it, it made me realize I wasn't alone. So I did that. Um, and then I also joined the Young Survivor Survival Coalition, which is specifically for young women diagnosed with breast cancer. And that's where I met a lot of young women um, that became my friends that I could also relate to, which was really nice. So that, so that was like my support system because the people I met there have become like my go-to for like either cancer or life. Great. So do you uh, think cancer has changed you in a positive way? Sorry, can you repeat that? Sorry, do you think cancer has changed you in a positive way? Um, I mean, yeah, I definitely think so. I think with cancer, it made me, um, you know, realize really what's important in life. And then everything else kind of, everything else makes me realize is like, there is a solution to everything. Because with cancer, you could do everything you can. You can have the best doctor in the world. You can have like, the best treatment plan, but sometimes things just go like they're, they just don't go your way. Um, and so it kind of helped me realize, but then things that there, that can go my way, things that I used to like complain about before I had cancer, like I realized those things, there's solution to it <laughs> and, and it's not worth my time anymore. Um, so those are the things, <coughs> excuse me. I have realized during cancer. Okay, so there are various stigmas going around regarding cancer, especially regarding breast cancer. So what what are your opinion regarding all those stigmas? Um, well, it depends what the stigma is, right? <laughs> um, so, I mean, I guess like, are there specific stigmas that you have in mind? Because, you know, some I agree, some I disagree with. Are oh, no. there stigma? Oh, sorry. Yeah, so you can continue, sorry for. Oh, no, no, I was saying, I, I was just asking for further clarification. Are there like specific stigmas? Because like, there are some stigmas, like I said, I, I do agree. And then there's some where I disagree. <coughs> Excuse me, there's something in my throat. But for example, the ones that I do disagree with, when I was first diagnosed, a lot of people said I had the good cancer or... Um, oh, at least all you get is a boob job, you know, but now that I was diagnosed with breast cancer, I know it's, it's not that simple. It is not the good cancer. Um, you know, there, it's definitely a, a, I don't know, a rough experience for me. And then the boob job thing, I, I mean, the fact that I was in surgery for nine hours and then it took me a while to recover from that, you know. Those things, like little simple things that people used to say now I know are like completely wrong. Okay. So if you have to sum up your journey in one sentence, what would that be? Um, wow, I didn't even, I haven't thought about that. For me, it's like, 
to sum it up is like just I kept believing in myself and so like I trusted the process because I knew like for example I chose the doctors I wanted to go with and from there I was a and then just knew like certain things are just out of my control but what I could and then figure out what I can control and so again it, it's just like believing in myself and not losing that hope all right that's all Rach thank you so much for uh, being with us today so I'm really sure that um, yeah this will really motivate survivors and caregivers out there who watches your video thank you so much once again of course. yeah no thank you for having me no problem